You know, if I had an intro, which I don't yet. This just might be it. See how good I can look when I'm a little cleaned up? You know, don't take very much. And you see this pin here, this is the RCAF pin. And while I have no current affiliation with the armed forces, uh, I would like this to change because, uh, you know, as I've said in other videos, I've worked my entire life, uh, I built my entire life around the military. It was, as it is for many other people, their, uh, their reason for living, right, to serve other people. Because life is not about wealth and power, it's about what we do for other people. You must understand this. And uh, the question that I always get, you know, uh, or that I always think about, especially when concerning the mil military and the military history, is why doesn't Canada have more Victoria Cross winners? Why is it so selective? You know, the, uh, the Americans, they hand out medals of honor like, like they're nobody's business, right? But we need symbols of virtue and virtuosity in, in the theater in the, the moments of, of absolute chaos, which, you know, uh, a legend is born. And, you know, there's a, there's a mixed relationship between uh, people who, who win these, high, these uh, highest awards and decorations. Uh, you know, some of them don't even want it. They, they thrust it upon them and they're made into pots and soldiers uh, for them to be admired by politicians and carted around like, uh, you know, uh, a dog on a leash, right? Uh, the one that I'm reminded of, is, I don't remember his, uh, his branch, but, you know, I, I watched his entire interview and his, his line was, you know, I don't like this thing. You know, it's a constant reminder of the worst day of my life, you know, uh, because there's, you know, it, it's a very old school mentality. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the psychological profile of these, 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 these winners is usually farm boys, right? Uh, people from the country who have to live very hard lives and they have to exist in, in tough times all the time. They have to have ingenuity uh, because that's what it takes to be a farmer, right? You're independent. You're, you're thinking on your feet and you're surviving by the, the sweat of your brow, right? It, it's... Uh, once you kill something, right, your life changes. And uh, speaking from experiences as, as, a, as a hunter, right, uh, you know, this is what the deer hunter is about in, in, in a small regard. Uh, you know, and especially the, the book that I, I cited before in the first volume on killing, in that a lot of people will shoot around and they won't shoot at the person. Right, because uh, the the sense of empathy is still there, and you can't really get rid of that in in the majority of people. Because why would you, right? Why would you? the The goal of the battlefield is, as as history has gone forward, and as most tacticians understand, is to wound people. It's not to to kill them, because the the more you wound people, uh, the more soldiers that are taken off the battlefield. And this is a, a conventional warfare. Uh, but when you consider psychological warfare, uh, you know, it, that, that has, it has such, such a grand and grandiose effect that uh, it, it's not just one person. It's an entire culture that gets obliterated. An entire culture, right? And you see, you see me, and uh, I'm in these clothes, and I'm, I'm acting differently. But, you know, the clothes don't make the man. The man makes the clothes, okay? The suit, the suit and tie right? It's earned, right? So if I, if I were to represent people as a civilian, and if I had that Victoria Cross, right? That's a standard to bear, right? The, the decorations uh, on a soldier are standards to bear. That's why there's, a, again, a mixed, a mixed relationship between being a role model 
and being, uh, you know, favoritism. It, it, and that's where, you know, politics comes into play with the dominance hierarchy. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, again, don't feel like soldiers are deserving of any kind of, de uh, any kind of decoration, any kind of honor, or any recognition, because they're, they're violent and they're toxic. We must understand that uh, the killer instinct is what has held humanity together and has kept us at, uh, you know, and kept us together in survival against the rest of the natural world because a tiger doesn't give a shit about you. If it's hungry, it's going to eat you. A bear, if it has a, has a cub and you get in its way, it's going to fucking kill you. Okay? There is no forgiveness in nature, and violence is part of our existence. We must understand that we are violent, and violent in nature, and no matter what we do to try and get rid of it, it'll just bounce right back because of, uh, you know, control. And the worst thing about control, especially when you talk about the uh, concentration of power uh, within societies and the ever-moving, ever-changing uh, uh, plumb bob of over the, uh, the matrix that is the political compass, right? Because it's always going to swing around, right? As is the physics, as is, you know, as, uh, you know um, as, is the micro, so, as is the micro, so the very tiny, so is the macro. This is the, the, our entire existence, right, uh, that we understand to this point. So the, the, uh, the quantum is also, is also the, uh, you know, the, the, the galaxy, so to speak, the interplanetary bodies and the, the, the relationship of them. Because there, there is no action without a reaction, right? These are Newton's laws it's in, and the laws of thermodynamics. It, it, and uh, we're not separate from them. Right? As sooner or later, there's going to be someone that pops up out of nowhere and completely and utterly changes the landscape because it has to happen. It has to. And if one person doesn't do anything about it, right? again, going with Kant's moral philosophy, uh, that uh, if everyone stands around and just watches the person drown, then we're all responsible. And at this point in time within the culture, we're all responsible for the suicides that happen of transgender and gay people. And then, the, you know, the, the, the exacerbate, sorry, the exponential effect upon the culture, which then is expanded and was, you know, exacerbated by COVID, which frankly, in my opinion, was chemical warfare, even if it was released uh, unintentionally by incompetence. But there's always that, that possibility that it was done on purpose uh, for the, the ascent of a state over another in order to have world dominance and control over humanity and its course of history. You know? Let's be clear about that. I haven't read this yet, the, uh, the Laskin Bear Tales. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I got this book from Kelowna. And the house that I was staying in was uh, basically, well, as someone else put it within the house, was a life raft for uh, disadvantaged people. And as a contractor in, in the aerospace industry within Canada, uh, you're disadvantaged, right? People don't understand that, uh, that you're at a disadvantage because the, the increasing in inflation at the, up to this point... Uh, and the devaluation of the currency by the printing of money and distribution thereof, and also you know the the misallocation and the corruption and the spending, the disappearance of funds uh, through the CERB program and CRB programs uh, that went to offshore accounts by the government uh, to to fund black ops projects or whatever they were, you know, uh, projects of influence to gain favor with other governments as to erase the history of Canada and of uh, Northern Europe and of the United States. 
in favor of other people that are not as intelligent. Because that's the thing is that when a civilization gets to a certain point of intelligence, the jealousy comes in through, right? It's the natural reaction. And if, if you look at the decreasing, uh, because of the technology, right? When the fact that, you know, at the top of the top of the mountain, which is, you know, Western civilization as it has been for a very long time. And I'm, I'm coming, to, coming at this from, you know, as a Canadian, right? Um, and as an educated person, right? Because I hold back a lot in, in, in my speech. And when I talk to people, I have to hold my tongue. I have to bite my tongue and I have to remain silent because um, of how much I've learned about people and how much I've learned about our history as humanity. And how much I understand now as a mature person, as an integrated person, and having come back from the brink of, uh, you know, absolute existential depression for years. And because then that's, a, you know, that's the, the conflict. You can laugh at me because, I, you know, I'm just wearing my, my PJs here underneath. But that's, you never know when you're looking at someone on YouTube what they're wearing below the waist, right? They could, they could be do, doing something naughty. See my hands. Thank you very much. There's a, uh, you know, humanity is 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 really weird. Okay, and this is this is why, you know, soldiers get PTSD, and why law enforcement and doctors and lawyers, anyone who has to deal with other people who gets extorted and gets gets pressured and and then also gets gets leveraged, right? Uh, anyone that's in service to other people that sees the, the dredge and the, 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 the dirty underbelly of our behavior uh, and then chooses not to do anything about it is just as evil, right? Uh, evil persists when good men do nothing. And this is the truth of the matter. Let's, let's not forget about that. You know, uh, there's a reason why uh, we have the organization of civilization and there's a reason why we need heroes, there's a reason why we need Victoria Cross winners. There's a reason why we need Medal of Honor winners. Because they are the very best of humanity. Whether they like it or not. Because that's what it is to be a leader. You know, it doesn't have, you don't have, why, why are most Medal of Honor winners um, from, from NCOs? Right? Most of them are not officers. They're NCOs. Right? And uh, you think about it, I'm thinking about the history, and there's like there's there's more than a couple within the the, the American history that uh, have multiple or multiple winners. Right? Their entire lives were dedicated uh, to service of and leadership of other people. Because that was the tradition, right? That's how you became nobility. You, you have to be knighted. You have to be part of something, part of an order, right? The order of military merit or the, the order of Canada, so to speak, right? You're a member, you're, you're, so that's where it serves, excuse me, I picked my nose, not very gentlemanly. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So let's go right to it. You know, the history of the, of the Victoria Cross, you know, cause that's, you know, this is something to, to, to know about, right? is that this burgundy color, which is the same color as the Victoria Cross, is uh, the color of blood, right? Stained uh, through an olive drab uniform and is dry. A lot of people don't understand the symbology of the color because not everyone is initiated within the visual arts. Not everyone, not everyone is, is initiated in you know uh, literature or a nonverbal communication okay okay so, uh, so let's go to Canada.ca and then Wikipedia. These are the first two results. Actually, we'll use the Canadian Encyclopedia instead of Wikipedia. Because it comes from the, the United Kingdom. 
So that's also uh, another source. It's a uh, veterans.gc.ca. And obviously, I'm not I'm not going to talk about things that I don't know about. Um, how can you teach something that you don't know, right? And you haven't had any kind of personal experience. Like when I think about my African history uh, professor uh, and my Russian history professor at Trent University, uh, they were both, you know, uh, had done research and had lived in either, you know, countries within Africa or uh, Russia and its uh, the post-Cold War uh, countries. Or they were from there, so like Rhodesia or South Africa, something along those lines, something within their lineage that connected them to it. Okay, so within the United Kingdom, the VC was instituted on the 5th of February, 1856, with awards retroactive to 1854. The first award to a Canadian was in February, 1857, to Lieutenant Alexander Dunn, uh, charge of the Light Brigade. Uh, so the eligibility, eligibility and criteria, the Victoria Cross is awarded for the most conspicuous bravery or some daring or preeminent act of valor, self-sacrifice, or extreme devotion to duty in the presence of the enemy. So considering the, in the era, era of terror, right, and guerrilla warfare, and, you know, uh, covert operations and infiltration, especially in late capitalism, you know, when you have, you have foreign influx, and uh, background checks are, are not done thoroughly because of, you know, some sort of setup, some sort of planning having, having, having taken place and favoritism to one's own, you know, group, in-group preference, which I don't blame other people for having because I have it, right? I prefer people of my own, my own heritage, right? I would rather look out for them. And, uh, you know, as, as should you, right? These are our families. All right, so the description here. So it's made of iron, right? And uh, if I remember correctly, the, the iron comes from a cannon. Uh, cross pat, uh, 1.375 inch wide with dark brown finish. That's the metal. Yeah, made from cannons captured from the Russians during the Crimean War. For mounting a straight bar ornamentation with laurels slotted for the ribbon, which has a V lug. Yeah. And I, how do, uh, hey, you know, uh, I'm an amateur historian, right? Uh, I remember this stuff just because I do, not because I, I just saw that. You know, and I've seen one. I've seen one in person. I have. And it blew, it blew my mind. I was like, holy shit, that's fucking real. And, it, and uh, you know, of course, there's a lot of history here in London. Uh, all the way back to, you know, the, uh, the foundation of Upper and Lower Canada. And London was actually supposed to be the first capital of Canada, but it was too close to, uh, to the United States during the American Civil War. And the Americans, well, they had actually, well, not during the Civil War, but uh, uh, the War of 1812, they'd actually traveled up through Windsor and there's a, it's called Battery Hill. It's here in, in, the, in, in Byron. And there was a pushback uh, southwards from that point because it's a high point over Victoria Park. Well, not Victoria Park, over uh, uh, Springbank, Springbank Park, right? And Victoria Park is downtown. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so we're going to read this from the Canadian Encyclopedia. And this is Victoria Cross instituted, by 18, instituted in 1856 by Queen Victoria is the Commonwealth's premier military decoration for gallantry. So what does gallantry mean? Let's look this up. Courageous behavior, especially in battle. Uh, polite attention or respect given to, by men to women. So dashing courage, uh, heroic bravery, noble-minded behavior, 
gallant or courtly attention to women. That's off of dictionary.com. Um, gallantry off of Cambridge University Press. Now, the quality of being brave when something is difficult or dangerous. Okay, so since 1856, uh, it is awarded in recognition to the most exceptional bravery displayed in the presence of the enemy. Although in rare instances, the decoration has been given to mark other courageous acts until there have been 99 Canadian recipients of the Victoria Cross. In 1993, Canada adopted its own national version of the Victoria Cross. The Canadian BC has not yet been awarded. You understand? We have not had a BC winner by a Canadian... Uh, Uh, by Canadian awarding. I don't mind children, but it's just a bit annoying. Okay, his first recipients of the Victoria Cross saw action in the Crimean War. Along, among them was a Canadian lieutenant Alexander Roberts Dunn was awarded the VC for heroism during the charge of the Light Brigade at the Battle of Balaclava. Another early recipient was William Hall, who in 1859 became the first Black and the first Canadian Naval recipient of the VC. Over the years, there's been 99 Canadian recipients, living and posthumous, so after death, of the Victoria Cross. This includes Canadians who were attached to the forces of other Commonwealth countries and some non-Canadians serving in Canadian units. The decoration is the form of a bronze cross pate uh, bearing the royal crest in the words for valor. The ribbon is dark and crimson. So for valor, you know, this reminds me of the, the Canadian heritage moments that used to uh, air on television. And uh, what's it? I don't remember the exact story, but it had to do with the First World War. All right. Uh, the, awarding, the awarding of the medal was dropped in 1972 when Canadian decorations for bravery was created as a cross of valor, star of courage, medal of bravery. However, in, eight, 18, in April 1987, Brian Mulroney's Conservative government asked for the Deputy Director of the Chancellor of Canadian Orders and Decorations to consider its reinstatement. So, you know, this has to do with unification and the, the obliteration of Canadian identity. And you know, not have not wanting or 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 uh, regarding Canadians as world class people, even by our own British compatriots. In 1993, Queen Elizabeth II approved the creation of the Canadian VC. The award is the same the same uh, criteria as the original British decoration. The Canadian VC resembles the original VC except for that Latin inscription "Pro Valore" replaces the equivalent English inscription for valor. No, yeah, it's okay, and no VCs have been awarded. So if we got 99 of these guys, these people, what you do to honor them is you speak them back into existence. So Alexander R. Dunn, 1854, uh, Crimean War. William N. Hall, 1857, Indian Rebellion of 1857. Herbert T. Reed, uh, Indian Rebellion of 1857. Campbell M. Dunk Douglas, 1867, Edaman Island Expedition. Raymond H. L. J. de Montgomery, uh, 1898, Battle of uh, Omar Duran, uh, Sudan, Hapden, Z. C. Cockburn, 1900, South Africa, Boer War, Edward J. G. Holland, 1900, South Africa, Boer War, William H. S. Nicholson, 1900, South African, Boer War, Arthur H. L. Richardson, 1900, Boer War. Richard E. W. Turner, 1900, Boer War. Edward D. Bell, 1915, First World War. Frederick W. Campbell, 1915, First World War. Frederick Fisher, 1915, First World War. Benjamin Gary, 1915, First World War. Michael O'Leary, 1915, First World War. Francis A. C. Scrimger, 1915, First World War. Leo Clark, 1916, First World War. John C. Kerr, 1916, First World War. 
James C. Richardson, 1916, First World War. J. A. Sinton, 1916, First World War. Thomas O. L. Wilkinson, 1916, First World War. Colin F. Barron, 1917, First World War. Phil E. Bent, 1917, First World War. William A. Bishop, 1917, First World War. Harry Brown, 1917, First World War. Robert G. Combe, 1917, First World War. Robert Hanna, 1917, First World War. Frederick M. W. Harvey, 1917, First World War. Frederick Hobson, 1917, First World War. Thomas W. Holmes, 1917, First World War. Cecil J. Kinross, 1917, First World War. Philip Connewall, 1917, First World War. Okil M. Lermuth, 1917, First World War. Thane W. McDowell, 1917, First World War. Hugh Mackenzie, 1917, First World War. William J. Milne, 1917, First World War. George H. Mullen, 1917, First World War. Christopher P.J. O'Kelly, 1917, First World War. Michael J. O'Rourke, 1917, First World War. John G. Pattinson, 1917, First World War. George R. Perks, 1917, First World War. Robert, sorry, J. James P. Robertson, uh, 1917, First World War. Robert Shanklin, 1917, First World War. Ellis W. Sifton, 1917, First World War. Harkis Strathen, Strathen uh, 1917, First World War. Wallace L. Elgy, 1918, First World War. William G. Barker, 1918, First World War. Roland Brooke, 1918, First World War. Alexander B. Bretton. 1918, First World War. Jane Brilliant, 1918, First World War. Hugh Cairns, 1918, First World War. W. H. Clark Kennedy, First World War. Frederick G. Coppins, 1918, First World War. John B. Croak, First World War. Robert E. Uh, Crushank, 1918, First World War. Edward DeWind, 1918, First World War. Gordon M. Flowerdew, 1918, First World War. Herman J. Good, 1918, First World War. Milton F. Gregg, 1918, First World War. John Samuel L. Honey, 1918, First World War. Bellin S. Hutchinson, 1918, First World War. Joseph Caleb, 1918, First World War. George F. Kerr, 1918, First World War. Arthur G. Knight, 1918, First World War. Graham Till Lyle, 1918, First World War. John McGregor, 1918, First World War. George B. McKean, 1918, First World War. Alan A. MacDonald, 1918, First World War. William Merrifield, 1918, First World War. William H. Metcalf, 1918, First World War. H. Harry G. B. Minor, 1918, First World War. Coulson N. Mitchell, 1918, First World War. Claude J. P. Nunnery, 1918, First World War. Cyrus W. Peck, 1918, First World War. Walter L. Rayfield, 1918, First World War. Thomas Ricketts, 1918, First World War. Charles L. Rutherford, 1918, First World War. Robert Spall, 1918, First World War. James E. Tate, 1918, First World War. John F. Young, 1918, First World War. Ralph L. Zengel, 1918, First World War. It's said within Canadian history that the First World War was when Canada became a nation.
John R. Osborne, 1941, Second World War. John W. Foote, 1942. Charles C. I. Merritt, 1942. Frederick T. Peters, 1942. Paul Triquet, 1943. Ian W. Valzaget, 1944. David V. Curie, 1944. Charles F. Huey, 1944. David E. Hornell, 1944. John K. Mahoney, 1944. Andrew C. Yuryansky, 1944. Ernest A. Smith, 1944. Aubrey Cossins, 1945. Robert H. Gray, 1945. Frederick A. Tilson, 1945. Frederick G. Topham, 1945. These people did not die for fucking propaganda and for the special treatment of minority groups and special interest. If you're not pissed off, you should be. Because the battle is very different than what it was 100 years ago. Or what it was 80 years ago. You know, if we don't understand geopolitics, then we can't understand conflict in general. And the best way to understand conflict is to talk to a fucking veteran. This is our history. There's two sides to every story. And when we tear down statues and symbols and examples of great people, and we bend over backwards to the fluidity and to the, the void, so to speak, the black mirror, then what do we have left? I have nothing further to say right now. I'll let you meditate on this. Because we haven't had a hero like this since the Second World War. That's from what I can understand. I'm not going to get into the design There's, you can look at this at Canada.ca, Department of National Defense uh, Service slash middle slash uh, Made Victoria Cross. Why is Canada not respected? Because we don't respect ourselves. 
and that is cultural suicide.